What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video on the channel. It's a beautiful, beautiful New Year's Eve out here today. I am nursing like a giant head cold, so I apologize for the stuffiness and stuff, but that's like 55, 60 degrees today. We're gonna get our first Arctic blast uh, overnight. I think the high for tomorrow is like 13. So needless to say, I will be uh, sleeping in tomorrow, not fishing, but I wanted to get out and make one last video for 2021. Obviously cannot thank all of you guys enough for uh, growing this channel so much over the last year. We've got big things coming here we're trending to hit uh, 20,000 subscribers pretty soon so if you guys are not subscribed please do so but yeah despite having a giant head cold one I should probably be resting uh, wanted to take advantage of the nice day here on New Year's Eve and see if we could do a catch and cook video which I have not done on the channel for a hot minute there are approximately uh, one million and four boats out on the lake today uh, it's a Friday everyone's still on Christmas vacation so all the fair weather fishermen are out so yeah I don't know if you guys can see back behind me there's a cluster of four boats uh, on the river channel back Back there but that's fine because I've got plenty of numbers all up and down the channel we're just gonna be doing the same things that we've been doing the last couple crappie videos water temps are still pretty warm as you can imagine yep we got 42 degrees still uh, we're approximately still six or seven degrees behind where we should be but with this big cold front coming it should get the crappies uh, big time stacked up on the brush for now we're just gonna be tickling the uh, standing timber the deep timber with the uh, usual stuff and we'll see what happens but yeah only looking for like maybe five or six keepers today for our crappie tacos catch and cook so yeah in the meantime we got to get uh, cameras rigged up here get live scope down and uh, just see what happens but we've got about probably two hours or so to uh, catch five or six fish and judging by the way that uh, every day has been here for the last couple weeks I don't think it's gonna be too difficult let's get after it all right rolling up on our first candidate here I think hit it probably just a little bit hot and we're gonna have to uh, come back to it here but again we're not trying to fill out any sort of limit or anything today just trying to make some new year's eve fish tacos but you guys can see i'm going to try and stand in the glare we've got the world's worst glare ever on the screen with the sun behind us today but yeah these look pretty promising i'll take five ten inchers not sharpshooting giants or anything anybody anybody all the way up and I got him on the first drop and boys and girls I wish that I had the net handy but it's easy to catch big fish but it takes skill to catch that size wow Oh, that feels better. Oh, will he make it though? Will he make it? He does make it. Ten and a quarter. I'll take, like I said, I'm not really hog hunting or anything today, so don't expect me to be cleaning any 14s. Just need five for fish tacos. Good enough for me. Don't be a meat maggot. Hmm, first drop. That should be a better one. Should be. Yep. Hooked funny, but I think he will make it. He's hooked so many different ways. Is he gonna go? Oh yeah. Number two. God, caught 50 freaking fish already, but there are just so many babies over here. A lot of what I want to fish has five or six boats already on it so I'm just kind of making do there's plenty of fish for sure but my milk run of bigger fish trees areas are taken so we will just weed through fish to catch more fish
all be better. Oh yeah, finally. Finally a better one. These things are making me work for it. Working for tacos, but it's worth it. I can already feel the front rolling in here. You guys can see the clouds have definitely moved in. We're gonna get rocked. Gotta switch my live scope battery. Mm, instant. Dude. <clears throat> wow. Mm, finally got a good one. Better one. There we go. I think we'll get one more after this one and then we're gone. Then it's fish tacos time. about one more. We'll just do one more. How about that? Good one. Mm-hmm. Is that him? It is him. Folks, that is all she wrote. We've been at the lake for 20 minutes, and we have five or six crappies for fish tacos. So let's wrap this up, get back to the house, and get to cooking. One last thing here before we leave. One thing you guys always want to at least try and do with your fish is uh, either bonk them on the head or bleed them out. In this case, I am gonna bleed these fish out, so all you need is a knife or some good scissors. Just get the uh, crappies up underneath their gills right here and basically just snip their throat. And that way, these fish will bleed out in the live well, obviously dispatching of them, but you will have nice and uh, super white fillets when we go to clean them up. So, always remember that, especially with uh, bloody fish like walleyes or salmon or white bass or anything like that. Just uh, do the fish a favor and get their gills cut and your fillets will be nice and white as well. All right, we are back at the house here. Gonna get my little 
fish cleaning station set up and get these six or seven fish out of here and get them cleaned up. I'm gonna get out of uh, my Devonte Adams jersey because I would never disrespect a man like that cleaning fish in his jersey. So I'm gonna get this set up here and uh, I'll show you just how to clean a crappie. If you guys don't already know, crappie are probably the easiest fish to clean right up next to walleyes. So we'll get the GoPro set up, um, get the table set up and start cleaning them. All right, we've got our little fish cleaning station set up here. So we've got our six or seven crappies with their throats cut nicely bled out in the bucket there. We've got some cold water here to put the fillets in. Got our Bubba knife, uh, got the trash bin for the guts and whatnot. And then of course, it is illegal in the United States to clean fish without a drink. So we made ourselves a uh, Buffalo Trace. Nice little old fashioned tonight. All right, first candidate here. So again, like I said, super easy to clean. Just take your electric knife straight down the side till you hit the backbone. Take it all the way down the side and then stop, leave a little bit of the skin on so you can just flip that fillet over. And I'll try and zoom this in, but if you guys can see, there is literally no blood in this entire fish right now. So you get super clean, nice white fillet. Take that knife down the skin. You've got your uh, fillet right there. Take the ribs out. Clean up the little schniblets here, and you've got your first perfect crappie taco fillet. So then same thing on the other side. Take it down the side, all the way. Flip that bad boy over. Take the skin off, and there you go. Got your last filet. <laughs> I'll just come over here and show you. You think they're eating this winter? That's a perfectly uh, intact, almost kind of missing its stomach there. Little three, three and a half inch uh, chad. Take the ribs out. Perfect, again, blood-free, nice and clean, almost transparent crappie filet. So get the rest of these guys done, take them in the house and start up on the tacos. And that right there is about as good as it gets for a perfectly portioned out crappie taco meal. Again, cannot stress enough uh, bleeding your fish out. Look at that filet board. Nothing but scales and uh, some guts. No blood, so all we gotta do is wipe that off. But I mean, these things have been in here for like less than a couple minutes, but they went in there just perfectly clean. Nice, transparent, awesome, awesome white meat fillets. So yeah, we'll get this uh, cleaned up, take these fish in the house and start prepping our uh, taco stuff. All right guys, well we are back in the kitchen here so we've got all the fixings. So we're gonna do this in two parts. So we've got the fish first, we're gonna batter up the fish and put them in the grease and then we're gonna do the sauce. You guys can see here, these have been in the fridge uh, in cold water, nice and firm fillets here. So we're gonna do a three part sauce, uh, super easy. We're gonna do sour cream, cilantro and lime juice uh, for the sauce. Like I said, you pretty much gotta like cilantro to make this sauce. Uh, if you don't, you can do without it. And then we're gonna add some fresh salsa on there too. And then of course for the crunch, uh, coleslaw mix. So the key to a good fish fry uh, in the Crisco Disco is always canola oil. You can use veggie oil and stuff, but I always feel like canola oil works a lot better for fish. So we've got the oil heating up in the cast iron skillet right now. Uh, so in the meantime, let's prepare the fish. Okay, so with crappie tacos, what I always do is uh, cut the fillets into thirds. I don't fry the whole entire thing whole and then put those in the tacos. I just cut them into thirds. So that's what we're gonna do here is just uh, lay all these out on the cutting board and then cut them into small chunks, which obviously, I mean, I feel like that makes the most amount of sense for a taco situation. You also make your fish go a lot farther. So yeah, I mean, you don't have to be like super crazy precise, but obviously just cut these into small pieces. So one filet equals three pieces of meat right there. You guys can see that six or seven crappies, I don't remember the exact number, uh, cut into thirds, just squared up like that. You're gonna make your fish go way farther. So that's gonna be more than enough for us tonight and then for Danny to have for leftovers for lunch tomorrow. Okay, so for now, we're just gonna let the fish set aside. We're gonna try and get those to room temperature and still keep them wet at the same time. So we're just gonna do 
the sauce now, just chop up the cilantro, put it in this with the sour cream, and then put a couple uh, limes worth of juice into there. All right, so now when you've got your cilantro all chopped up, just throw that into your bowl. There's really no exact measurements for any of this. It's just kind of like what you prefer. A lot of people think that cilantro tastes like soap. I love cilantro, so I put a lot of it in there. Then you just want to take your sour cream and then put as many globs as you pretty much want in there. We're going to go with three globs. Is that a measurable situation? Globs? Totally. So then we've got that in the bowl. So then just take one of your limes. I feel like the consistency you want is probably going to take about two to two and a half limes. All right, so once you do about like two limes, then what I would do is just start mixing it up and then see what your consistency is like, because you're going to have to mix that lime juice around in there. And then if the consistency is good, then you can leave it as is. Or if you want the sauce a little bit thinner, then you can just add another lime. This is just about how we like our sauce. Um, but again, if you want it thinner, you can add a third lime. Should we add a third lime? Yes. So we're gonna make the sauce just a little bit thinner and add a third one here. <laughs> How about we start with a half? Yeah. Because that's already looking kinda. I think that'll be good. Yep. So two and a half limes is the correct amount. Okay, that looks good. So let's transfer that to the refrigerator. Now it's time for the fish. So preferred uh, fish batter for fish tacos. We like this Louisiana Cajun crispy stuff. Shore Lunch has a good Cajun uh, version and so does Andy's, but this is I think the one that we've settled on. It's got a real light crisp to it. So we're gonna take the better breader, something that I have not used on my channel before. I spend way too much money on Ziploc bags to be wasting uh, Ziplocs on fish fries. So we're gonna start migrating everything to this here. So uh, it's pretty easy. This is actually the first time I ever used this thing. So I hope that I'm actually doing it right. But I think you just put, take this off, put all the batter in the bottom like that, and then put the strainer situation right there, and then take all your fish, dump it right in there, and then put the top on. And once it's all in there, you just give her a nice little, Shake. Oh, oh dude, shit. it's coming everywhere. I'm telling my parents that we're getting our money back for this because this was a Christmas present. <laughs> we do not endorse the better better. I do not endorse the better better. It's supposed to not make a mess. Let's see what they look like. That looks pretty good. Oh, they look pretty good. Yep, just a nice even coating. I really don't like a super thick coating on my fish taco fish. Not like if we were doing a fish fry or something. I like a real light one, so. Just enough to, to make sure that the fish is all coated. All right, and then ideal temperature for the oil. I can pretty much tell when it's ready to go, but ideally you want like 375 to 400. This is not smoking, so it should be good, but what you can do is always just take a piece of your fish and just dip it in there, and then as long as it's sizzling like that, you can just drop those guys right in. So these are all ready to go. So we're just gonna throw as much in here as we can. You really, you don't wanna crowd your fish too much, and you also don't want to uh, shuffle the fish around. When you put it in there, don't move the fish around, just let it sit. Otherwise you won't get a real consistent crisp on the whole entire piece. So we might have to do, this is actually a little bit more than I thought it was gonna be. So we might have to do two separate batches, but that's just about what you want your uh, fish looking like in the grease. All right, so when you cut these fillets into smaller cubes like this, they really don't take long at all uh, in the grease. So just obviously wait until they're floating. That's about exactly what you want things to look like right there. So my other tip that I can offer you is to keep your fillets nice and crispy. Always put them on some sort of strainer on your pan. I've always been taught to put them on paper towel, but when you stack all the fish on top of everything on a paper towel, it just soaks all that grease into the fillets. So if you keep them separated on that uh, strainer deal there, you will have much crispier fillets. All right, that's first batch. We'll throw the second batch in here. Okay, it's all you. Okay. Let's do this. Show us how you do it. Okay. Just get enough to go all the way down. That's good. And 
then you start with this. A hundred gallons of it is how much you need. Like, 103 gallons. Yeah, just like that. And then a little bit of this. Just like that much. And then a little pico. Am I Rachel Ray? And that is a fresh crappie taco from crappies that were swimming like four hours ago. Incredible, just incredible. I'm gonna eat one right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Money. Like we don't do this two or three times a month. Like it's my first time. Sit, sit. Tucker, eat it. Papers. Okay, even though you guys didn't catch them with me today, you can still eat some. All right guys, well that is just gonna about wrap things up for us tonight. Thank you guys for sticking around for the cooking portion of this video. For whatever reason, the catch and cook videos on my channel never seem to do very good, but I always enjoy doing them, so I'm gonna make them anyway. If you guys have a favorite uh, catch and cook recipe, especially a fish taco recipe, drop that down in the comments below because I feel like there's a lot of other people that would benefit from that. This is just what Danny and I have been doing for so long. This is her absolute favorite meal, so that's why I wanted to uh, do this tonight, and especially do it on a video. So enough about that. Uh, just wanna give a big fat shout out and a big fat thank you to everyone that subscribes to this channel everyone that watches these videos definitely want to give a major shout out and a huge thank you to all of my customers through kansas angling experience guide service we have ran again for the second year in a row over 300 trips this year which is absolutely incredible seven years now full-time fishing guide in northeast kansas and i cannot thank everybody enough for the support even everybody that talks shit uh want to thank you guys too because every time that you talk about me in a good way or a bad way it benefits me so thank you so much also want to give a big shout out to all my sponsors we've taken on so many new partnerships already in 2021 and foresee some big things coming in 2022 so thank you to garmin stowaway mounds fox river rods pc fun bams jig company swing them in baits waterland optics fishmore outdoors binks pro series spoons motion fishing co huge huge thank you to everyone that supports me supports my brand my business i cannot thank everybody enough so with that said uh, it's a fresh year here. We've got, again, big things coming. I got some big trips planned. Danny and I are getting married this year. We're also going to try and buy a home. So uh, there's going to be a lot going on. So with that said, please make sure you are subscribed to the channel. It helps me out. And if you're a supporter of this channel, please make sure you go check out all of my sponsors too. Support the people that support me. I'm running out of breath because I still have a massive head cold and it's not getting any better. And there is a big Arctic storm coming overnight. So I'm going to get out of here and make another drink. You guys take it easy. Have a great 2020. 22 and I will catch you on the flip side.